Airtable's amazing at storing your data, and their reporting's pretty good too. You've got some nice charts and visualizations, and you can create dashboards with interfaces. But if you've been trying to do reporting on goals or quotas inside of Airtable, it can be a little bit messy of a process and require some workarounds. Airtable's introduced some new filtering features, which coincidentally really help us with being able to track goals. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how we can make goal tracking a much more dynamic experience. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. So you might have all sorts of different goals you wanna track in the system. For this particular use case, we're going to talk about one that is kind of CRM-esque. We have deals or opportunities that we're tracking for sales reps, and they have quotas. We need to know how much money they're actually bringing into the company. So we give them a sales target, and we need to see how they're actually performing against that with the closed deals. So before we dig in, let's talk about the different tables that we have. I've got deals. These are our actual opportunities that we're tracking the amounts of, and we're tracking that against the sales reps with an expected close date. Then we have our sales reps table. These are the people themselves that we're tracking these goals for. We have our targets. We could call this quotas. We could call it goals. We could call it KPIs. Here we're tracking the individual goal for a specific sales rep, an amount of money as the target, their fiscal period, and the dates for that. And then I happen to have this fiscal periods table. You don't need to have this. I just find that it's often easier when you're doing things like CRM reporting to actually track fiscal periods. And then you can reference them in here and have your start and end dates automatically populated as opposed to always filling out that data with those dates. So back on our deals table, a really important field that we have here is this expected close date. And we somehow need to derive the fiscal quarter for this. So let me talk about kind of a couple different paths that people would do in the past for this kind of reporting. So if we have this expected close date, we could create a formula here for fiscal quarter. We're not going to get into the specifics here, but basically we're having this generate this Q4 FY 2026 based on the different dates of those opportunities to generate this. And then from here, one of the things that we could do is we could add a filter. Let's add a condition and we'll make sure that the stage is only if these deals are closed one. So we're really using the functionality of views to be able to view a segment of our data. And then we could also group our data here. So we could group this first. If I expand this, we could group this by our fiscal quarter. So now we can see all of the deals that are one by quarter. We could add another group here and let's have that be the sales rep. So now we've got kind of two layers of grouping. Here's our quarter, here's our sales rep, only the closed one deals. And you notice that we've got this summarization here where we can say, here's the sum of those opportunities. And this is the information that we need, right? How much have they actually closed one? That's what we're tracking. But the problem with this is that this is not actually data inside of the system. I can't do anything with that number there. So for example, if I wanted to say, okay, well, what's their progress against their target? So Jamie here has $299,000 of closed one revenue this quarter. But if we look at her target of 500,000, we'd presumably want to be able to divide her closed revenue by the target to figure out what percentage of the way she is there against her target. Well, that doesn't work very well because again, this isn't data, whereas the $500,000 is data. And so we can't really compare those two if we're just looking at a view. Now, this is nice if you're a sales manager and you just need a summary to quick look at, but if you're trying to do other kinds of calculations that you might do with formulas, we really can't do that with these summarizations that we have. So then the next most common advice you hear is that we need to actually link these opportunities to a target. You can see we've got a linked record. This is linking over to our targets table. So if we do that, then we would have to either manually or via an automation select the appropriate record and we could choose that. We could do that in automation to populate it. That might sound okay, especially because we can do that with automations. But now this causes a new problem because if you've been on a sales team, you realize that this expected close date is going to shift. It's going to change over time. So if you have to bump this out a quarter, now we got to change which target this is connected to. And this starts to feel like a very unnatural process. Yes, we do want to have targets that we input in the system, but do you really want to have to rely on automations that every time you create and update these records, now we have to look at them and reassess if we have the right target record attached to this. And in addition to the complexity here, you're burning automation runs. And I don't really think this is a good use case for automations because all we're trying to do is some reporting. And should we really have to rely on server-side automations to be able to change this? 
I don't think that's a great way to do it. Okay, so here's the path that I would take instead. It's not perfect, takes a little bit of setup work to it, but we're still gonna get a better, more dynamic result as opposed to having to rely on automations or manually clicking and selecting target records and changing them all the time. Right here, I'm on my sales reps table. And so you can see a couple of fields that I added. One is we of course have our linked relationship to our deals. And if we come over to our deals, we can just see that's the deals, here's the sales rep, there's the link we have, that makes a lot of sense. So now we've got our deals that are listed and those deals represent all of the deals across time that we have. So one of the things that we could do is we could edit this field and with our filters, we could add this filter record selected by condition. And this is only going to filter the way it displays right here, which is to say it doesn't get rid of the old data or anything like that. So one of the things that we could do here is say, take the expected close date of those deals and if it's on or after our start date, or if it's on or before our end date, those are the deals that we want to see. Now, where are those start and end dates coming from? These are lookup fields that are coming from our target. And so what this means is I have created a new linked relationship on here to our current sales target. This isn't to all of our sales targets. And so if we take a look here and we edit that, you can see that we're not allowing linking to multiple records. We're just displaying that current sales target. And so now we have our lookup fields from that saying, okay, well, here's the start and the end time. Therefore, we're only showing the relevant deals from that time period. So now the next thing we can do is take a look at our rollup field. And if we click in here, we can see for our rollup, we're taking a look at those deals. We already applied the filter of just those current quarters deals, but we can add an additional filter if we want to say that the stage is closed one. The other thing I wanna point out about the deals is that we're actually using dynamic conditions. This is a relatively newer feature in Airtable over the last few months. So instead of saying we're just going off of a hard and fast date, this is what gives us the ability to plug in that start and end date by using a dynamic rather than a static condition. So now let's go ahead and open up our roll up here. And you can see this is where we're rolling up the deals that we already have filtered on based on if they're in this quarter. And we're adding an additional filter to say only if the stage is closed one. And that again is coming from the deal records themselves. We only want to roll up that deal amount. And so here we're going based off of the total amount, the deal value from those deals to be able to sum this and find that, okay, here are the values. If we add them all together, for Alex, for Jamie, for Morgan, and for Taylor. Now we have their closed one amount for this quarter on that sales reps record. Now what we need to do is go over to our targets and we have a couple additional fields that we have here. So let me open these up so we can see them. So here we've got the current target for rep. That's just what we have back, the essentially inverse relationship of current sales target. And then here we have a lookup, which is referencing that rollup that we just talked about a moment ago, the closed one for this period. So we can see, okay, here's the closed one amount for each of those reps. Well, the really cool part is that now we can take that amount and we have our target amount over here and we can divide that to figure out our progress against the target. So what we can do is we just have a formula and we can divide that closed one divided by the target amount. And if we come over to formatting, now we can display this as a progress bar if we want to, percentage values, you've got a lot of different options here. But this is where we can say, ooh, Alex, you're not quite there yet. Let's see how we can plug into some of your deals. Whereas Morgan, hey, you're smashing it this quarter. You've got about 2X what your actual goal is. So good luck, we're gonna deploy more quota to you next quarter. Now there's one thing I'd still recommend using an automation for. And the reason is because on the sales reps record, in order for this to really work, we've got that current sales target for each of those users. Now, if we say, okay, it's next quarter, we're flipping this over, we X this out and we add on say the next quarter, I guess we haven't created the targets, but we add on the Q2 amount. Well, that's simply going to mess up the actual data for that particular target. So the thing I would use an automation for is it's the end of the quarter, you want to actually lock in this reporting because you want to be able to take a look at historicals. How is the sales rep doing quarter over quarter for the actual performance? Then I would take this closed one amount, which is a lookup, and use that automation to say, here's end of quarter reporting, and use it to stamp that actual amount 
into a currency field rather than having it be dependent on this series of lookups and rollups. It's better just to have the hard actual data so that we can compare it quarter to quarter. So again, there's a little bit of setup to get this working, but once it is, now you're not reliant on, okay, we have an opportunity linked to the sales rep. Now let's go find the sales rep record to link it to and manage that as it changes quarters and everything else. It's going to be just a much more automatic dynamic process. We could then take the amounts that we have on the rollups or the progress, put those in an interface for actual dashboards, a lot of possibilities of what we can do next. So if you have any questions about how you can build your own automated systems in your business, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.